welcome to another week with author E. Jamie. Um, I am coming to you from my brand new webcam. I am so happy that I was able to get this uh, webcam, uh, sort of a little gift to myself. Um, it's another uh, Logitech or Logitech, however you pronounce it, because um, I wasn't happy with the uh, webcam that I had before that had to use my um, like it didn't have its own software so I couldn't really like adjust anything sort of with it and um, when I was doing my long reactions for like say my Turkish dramas that are usually like two hours an episode the recording time would only would only go up to about an hour and a half and then it would cut off and then I'd have to sort of pause the episode and uh, start recording again um, so that was always sort of a little bit of a hassle um, but I, um, so got this one, so excited, uh, went on a short walk today, because I was sort of, it's supposed to rain all day, and, um, it's a little damp, it's a little drizzly here and there, um, so went on sort of a short walk, and went, decided that today I was going to go on, uh, grocery shopping, because I needed to go one of these free days that I have. Uh, so I decided that today would be the best day because the, the um, grocery store is really like right next to me. Um, so I'm going to show you a bit of uh, sort of what I got. Uh, first of all, I'd like hope that everybody had a wonderful uh, holiday and a happy new year. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, resolutions and stuff and sort of what's coming in the new year. Uh, in a little bit but first let me just show you my grocery haul uh, I got a lot of stuff today um, and I I think for a pretty great price all told I think I spent about 120 but um, I got a lot of stuff so I think I think it was a good uh, shopping day today so first let me get my first course Whoops, Always gotta get my chips. Ketchup, ketchup chips is my blood type. Let me just put that right there, and then we'll put it away afterwards. Um, and I got some uh, nachos to go because I have um, some uh, salsa still left. I had to get bread. That's, some, that's the store brand uh, bread. For like a dollar seventy or something, that was really good. Um, and I got some hmm, pizza pops, the deluxe. Now these are the kinds that I like. I do not like the more popular sort of hot pockets or like pizza pockets. I I, I had to get them like last time because they didn't have these, but these are my favorite. They are just better. The cheese like melts better. The 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 sauce just tastes better. The it's just better. So I got those. And I usually like eat these like on like work days where like I don't have time really to cook. So I just sort of stick these and they sort of carry me. Uh, on my sort of work days. Um, I also got, is this the pulled pork? Yeah, this is the pulled pork. This is sort of, it's pulled pork and it's, um, yep, you just, you basically just sort of stick the pouch in a pot, boil it, um, then you, uh, once it's like, it's like, 15 minutes and then you uh, take it out open the the bag dump it and then you shred the the meat and it's all like delicious and sweet and like barbecuey and so so good you can put these in a sandwich you can like pour that pour it like over rice you can like have it with like french fries and pour like the like along with like the ketchup you can like pour like the sauce from the from this like on the front so good so so good so that's it's good too I mean, now i'm not thinking i'm kind of craving it now so i might have this for lunch <laughs> and 
and bacon. They had the uh, store brand for like $3.99, $2.99, $3.99, something like that. And I've been looking for this dang diced ham for forever, which I have not been able to find for like the longest time. They finally had it. This is like so good to make like split pea soup with this and like the, the split peas. So good. So, so good. And I'm kind of like, because I'm looking at the weather and it's like really sort of like gray and like dreary and thing. And I really like sort of having soup and just sort of like comforty, cozy food on a sort of like gray, dreary day like this. So I might, but I might, but I'm really craving the pulled pork. <laughs> so that might be, that might be. So that's, that's one bag done. And I got like three bags of stuff and I'm very grateful that the um, grocery store is close by because it was it was something carrying this all home <laughs> and your girl doesn't have a car so eat. Okay, let me bring the other one I got this sort of three pack of ground beef it's like sort of ground beef and pork now they used to be ten dollars for the pack of three but I guess inflation slash price gouging, it's now like $12.99. So that was annoying, but this lasts me like a very long time. So stick it in the freezer and you're, you're good for a while. Then um, I didn't have it on the list, but I realized when I was there that I was out of pasta. So again, store brand. Pasta. I was also, I am running out of seasoning salt and they didn't have my favorite seasoning salt, which is sort of the um, H, well, the, the HY one, I actually had to order a three pack of that on Amazon, like the last time that I ordered that I got seasoning salt because I couldn't find the one that I like anywhere. And the last time that I went to my grocery store, they had the Lowry seasoning salt. And this time they didn't. I didn't get it last time because I thought, oh, they carry it now. So I'll just come in and get it the next time I need seasoning salt. And I need seasoning salt and they didn't have it. So I ended up getting this Cool Runnings seasoning salt, which um, it's... I'm pretty, pretty sure that this is sort of going to be like the same thing because um, seasoning salt in general is the same, but I'm sort of like, like the, the HY one that I have now is pretty much the same as the Lowry, so I'm not really mad about it. Um, so I'm assuming that this one is sort of going to be the same as well, I'm hoping. Um, so, yep, got my seasoning salt. Let me just set that down there. Then I needed to get tissue. So got some tissue. Especially because um, your girl might be reacting to a very sad movie soon. Um, I'm thinking, thinking maybe that my next movie reaction is going to be to After the Promise with uh, Mark Harmon, which I remember watching a very, very long time ago. So I don't remember much about it, except that his wife dies and his kids get taken away from him. It's a set during the Depression era. And I remember the ending scene. And that's about it. So uh, that's probably going to be my next movie reaction. Um, so we got uh, fries. And my favorite fries lately have been the very very skinny almost matchstick kind of and they call them restaurant style but i've never had like fries in a restaurant sort of like like this they're usually like the regular like thicker kinds but they're these are like the very very skinny kind of like 
the shoestring, but even like skinnier uh, fries. And I really, really like these. So I got those. And I was checking the, um, I checked it sort of like against maybe like the cheaper McCain's uh, one, but they were actually the same price. So I just got these. That's going to fall. Nope. Oh. Okay, you're staying there. Good. <laughs> then, your girl needed milk. And, again, I usually prefer the 2%, but they didn't have the 1 liter 2% um, that I wanted. But they had the 3, so I was like, uh, okay. Uh, they had it in, like, the 2 liter. But um, I like milk, but I'm, I, I'm not going to go through enough uh, used before it goes bad. So I just got the one liter, two, three percent. Whoop. Um, and then I was, I'm also running out of the, uh, my favorite Portugalo mild sauce. And this like is so good. You can like drizzle it on like rice, on mashed potatoes, on like fish, on meat, just, it literally does go with everything. And it's so, so good. Uh, my sister introduced it to me, but she usually gets the hot sauce because she's a hot sauce girl. I am not a hot sauce girl, so I got the mild. And the second bag done, and that's blueberries. I got some blueberries because I uh, need needed some fruit. <laughs> So that's the second bag done. And we got one more bag. I got these. This is a Portuguese staple. And it is custard tarts. Now, these are pretty, pretty good. Um, not quite the same as if you would get them in a uh, actual like, Portuguese bakery like freshly made, but they're very, very good. Very, very good. So, um, yeah. Uh, it says it's from the Nova Eta Bakery, Nova Eta Bakery, which is a very sort of popular Portuguese bakery here in uh, Toronto. Um, so we'll sort of see how that goes. Looking forward to that. Next we have these, oh no, okay, the green, the ground beef, the three pack that I got was actually $10. This bag of barbecue chicken wings of the store brand barbecue chicken wings, you can see, sort of, I'm holding up the wrong side bag, <laughs> barbecue chicken wings, um, this one is these bags are usually ten dollars, but because of price gouging slash inflation, um, they were twelve ninety nine, which is not great, but still okay because these are my favorite store bought chicken wings. Um, they're like the the uh, the sauce on it. Like there's actually sauce on it, and it's uh, sticky and. Um, sweet and tangy and bar barbecue-y and just very, very uh, good. These are the closest that I can get to a uh, sort of wing pizza place that I used to live close to when I lived um, um, in like a different sort of area. Not downtown, more like I guess would I say East End or West End? I'm not sure, but I lived in a place where they had a uh, pizza wing place called Pepino's. And there I would get, every time I would get paid, I would order their wings and uh, fries because they had the best chicken wings. It was like saucy and like the sauce was like thick and sweet and just so good. And I actually tried to like call them up and see if they would deliver to like where I live now. And unfortunately they don't. And that made me sad. 
but these are like the closest that I can get to the same sort of taste and consistency. So, a, a, a little consolation. Uh, then I got some more. Ah, you're going to fall out of the bag, aren't you? I got some more clementines. Got my yummy little clementines, which for me is like the best orange. Um, then I got whoosh, some pork chops that uh, I got. I got them because they were like 40% off. And so they're only three, but they usually comes like in a pack of four. So it's not really that much of a miss, but um, got these. Come here. And then I got another of those sort of like prepared meat kind of things like the pulled pork. But this one I got, it's beef pot roast au jus. And I've tried this before, and it's also like really, really good. Same thing. You just stick the the bag that comes inside. You stick it in the oven, in the uh, in a pot uh, with uh, boiled water, and you cook it for a while, and then you uh, undo the you zip up, you snip the bag, and it just you can like have it with like potatoes, mashed potatoes, and like the 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 gravy from this the au jus on like mashed potatoes or same thing like fries or so so good so amazingly good are you gonna fall you're gonna fall let's see put you over there um got some chicken pack of like six for like four 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 sixty five not bad at all. I needed, uh, I needed pasta sauce, and this is the Irresistibles brand. Now I will say, I do not like the Irresistibles frozen fruit. I don't like that brand for the frozen fruit at all. There is a horrible, horrible chemically taste to the frozen fruit but um i do like the for the pasta sauces i do like the catelli brand that i get from the dollar store that comes with the meat already like in the pasta sauce it's like a bolognese but they, they didn't have it at this store what they did had did did have was the irresistibles with the extra meat inside. So it's made with uh, beef, pork, and red wine. So I'm going to try it and see sort of how that goes. I hope it's really good. <laughs> and next we got some store brand ketchup. Store brand ketchup for like $3.99. Because I the Heinz was like five ninety nine and no, I'm not paying that. And got some chicken thighs for like five bucks. And lastly, and this is sort of a good, sort of cheap, cheap meat that you can sort of fry up and. If you're not squeamish, which I'm not, because uh, your girl grew up poor, so we like made do with a lot of like different like cheap meats and stuff. These are chicken hearts, and they are so good, so easy to bake. To make, uh, you just uh, you can like cook them up and like make them with like soup and stuff like that, but primarily we would like uh, seasoning salt, garlic. Um, herb of sort of like your choice uh fry it up and uh put it over like rice or like potatoes or like anything sort of like that just use it as like you would use like any other sort of kind of meat um yeah you can like make like a make it with like a saucy kind of gravy as well if you wanted 
uh, with like tomato paste and seasoning salt and like chicken stock or, or something like that. And uh, really, really good. So that is my grocery haul for, and all that was uh, roughly 120 something dollars. I think, do I have it? Did I put it in here? Or did I put it in the Walmart one? I'll put it in the Walmart one most likely. But yeah, it was 120 something dollars. Um, I think that's really good. That's a really good haul. Um, so yeah, that's what I got. Um, and so, yep, going to be, um, I am almost finished. I am almost finished Anne of the Island. I'm like this close. And <sighs> sad that Ruby Gillis, unfortunately, passed away. So I was not expecting that to happen, but she did, and that was a very, very sad uh, moment. Um, that sort of almost got me because it sort of like triggered like some stuff about like my sister and like it just it was kind of a, a little bit of a difficult passage to get through, but um, it was yeah. So that happened. Um, Gilbert proposed and sort of like confessed his feelings for her finally and like proposed to her and this dum-dum said no because I don't think that yeah she I she's just she's not ready she's not ready to admit her sort of feelings for him yet and I think that like she's not ready to sort of like be tied down kind of she's sort of like just still kind of fighting finding her footing of like what she wants to be and what she wants her life to be so i suppose i can sort of understand it like in that sense but i was so like hurt for my poor blueberry gilbert blight i was so hurt for him and, uh, yeah, so now things are kind of, like, strained between them, and it's just not, I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy about it. Um, I am almost, I will be, f I think I'll be finishing this one today, and that's, um, Alessandro's Prize. Um, and it's, I'm very, very much enjoying it. Um, Lily has this like ass butt fiance who is like trying to get her back and like just finished like basically attacking her like just went like crazy violent on her and um now Alessandra was sort of making her stay with him because she, he doesn't like he's afraid for her safety kind of thing he wants to protect her so um he's being like even like before the attack, he was being like a little bit overbearing, but not bad at all by like regular Harlequin present standards. He is like, I would say he's like a beta hero with a smidge of alpha in him. He has a little like, like a cup of coffee with like a little drop of milk <laughs> in it. That's like the equivalent of his beta to alpha ratio. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm still like, it's delightful. I'm enjoying it. Um, my only one qualm is that, um, she finds out that the reason she got the job, like basically the reason she got the job working for, uh, the restaurant in, I think in, yeah, in, in Alessandro's restaurant, like she finds out that he owns the restaurant and, um, and like that whole thing um, was because he was, I believe, if, unless I misunderstood something, was that he was attracted to her and, like, wanted to be with her. And so that's sort of why he hired her. Um, and she seemed to, like, accept that kind of a lot easier than I would. And sort of that the aunt was kind of in on it and that her meeting Alessandro, 
well, she had had a crush on him when she was like a teenager, but sort of him kind of getting reintroduced into their life and coming upon them when they were like sitting in the restaurant was not really an accident and was more like a setup by the aunt and kind of by Alessandro. So I would have been more, a little bit more upset about it than she seemed to be. Um, but that's like my one sort of qualm with it. Apart from that, I, it's, I'm really enjoying it. It's delightful. I am going, definitely going to be finishing it today. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, going to have my next book lined up for you to show you guys off tomorrow, most likely. Um, so going to be doing that and, uh, going to be reading more of Anne of the Island. I am also going to be doing my next sort of little update for my um, Outlander Bees vlog. Uh, if you are new here, I have been reading, my nighttime read is Diana Gabaldon's Go Tell the Bees That I'm Gone, Outlander Book 9, and I've been vlogging that journey. Uh, chapters 1 to 10, I think. Yeah, 1 to 10 are already, or chapters 1 to 9, something like that is already up on uh, this channel. So if you want to go and uh, see my thoughts for that, you can uh, find that video here. Um, I So I will be also recording my, from chapters nine to I think 20 or 10 to 20, something like that. I'm going to be recording that today because I am up to chapter 20, 21 right now. Uh, and I'm go, I'm, deliberately like going slow with it and just reading it sort of at night because I know that it's going to be a while before we get book 10 and I don't want to finish too soon and have to wait that long because unless you are new here hi I'm an I'm a delayed gratification girl my sister is not oh she Julia LeBlanc of the fantastic outlander videos she wants you know if she you know watches a show, she wants to watch all the show, like, immediately. If she reads a book in a series, she wants to finish, like, the whole series immediately. I like to drag things out and make them last. She does not. Um, so I'm going to, be, going to be doing that. I am also going to be editing uh, one of what I hope will be a book to release this year. Uh, it will be a republishing of a story that I got the rights back on uh, a year or two ago, and it's uh, Wanted. So uh, Wanted, uh, I did have it published a couple of years ago, and I um, got the rights back, so I'm re-sort of editing it and like um, just sort of polishing it up a bit more and like tweaking it um, and to sort of have that for you. That will be a book coming up coming out hopefully this year. What I am also doing this year is I am going to be attacking one of the many old uh, works in progress that I have um, in that damn filing cabinet. <laughs> I have over a hundred, easily, over a hundred uh, works in progress that I keep putting off because I have bright shiny new ideas. Um, and I do have bright, shiny new ideas going on in my head, telling me not to do that and work on this and blah, blah, blah. And I tell you my, my brain, like sort of, my mind has no off switch when it comes to plot ideas. Uh, thankfully I have learned to write them down. Um, but yes, I am in terms of like new books out for you guys. There is that, uh, old work in progress that I... Um, about like, f I have like 54, about thousand words to it. So I got a good chunk of it done. And I think it's going to be a two book series, two book, maybe more. I, I don't foresee more, but right now for sure, I know there's going to be two. And the first one, uh, will be sort of a, it's a story about two women two young girls 
and it's set like in the 1920s uh, in the US in 1920s and um, there is sort of a murder that happens and they have to sort of go on the run and get like new identities and stuff and um, it's it's called Good Women and it's uh, sort of their story uh, living these like secret lives and like falling in love and um, finding their fortunes in 1920s uh, California um, and yeah so I got a good sort of chunk of it done uh, and looking forward to finally releasing finishing and releasing that one uh, I've been working on that book on and off for over 20 years over 20 years <laughs> and like I keep like going back to it but then like I keep getting distracted by like the bright shiny new ideas and um, so I'm hoping to release those two books this year if if I am able to release finish release edit polish up and just release those two books I might might get started on Blood Vows Book 5, which is going to be Gianni's story. So we had Will's story, and thank you so much to everybody who's bought a copy of Will's story. That's Blood Vows Book 4. Um, so that's sort of what we have there, and we now will be working on Blood Vows Book 5, which is Will's brother Gianni and his story. And his story will be set more in the kind of mafia world. Will's story was, but it was more sort of like his difficulties reconciling his self kind of like as a cop and against like sort of like the background of sort of the mafia world. Johnny's story will be completely immersed in the mafia world because he's going to fall in love with a woman from another mafia family. Not necessarily, not like a, not like, um, the, the vendetta, not like the first book where it's like rival mafia families. Like that that's it's not going to be that it's just going to be he's going to fall in love with somebody who is in a mafia family and uh deals are going to have to be made murders are going to have to happen um fights for control sacrifices made so yeah i'm i'm I have that one sort of like pretty much plotted out like in my head already and like written down and stuff. Um, so yeah. If we can get these two books out this year and I have time later in the year, I might start Blood Vows Book 5. So that one most likely will not be released this year. That will most likely be released in 2024. But uh, to get a good start on it later this year would be great. So, uh, I'm going to be tackling, I'm um, going to try and like polish up at least a chapter of uh, Wanted, and then uh, for the rest of the day sort of focus on um, working on uh, good women. Um, it's under here. It's under my food, but let me grab the, <laughs> what I was watching, and that's, um, I am... I have one more disc left of Queen of the South. And again, I'm enjoying it. Not loving it as much as I loved the first three seasons. But my favorite thing about this season is easily Pote and Carol Kellyanne. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that they're together. That they're getting together. That they are falling in love. I'm loving it. Um... Teresa broke broke it off with the singer dude um, to kind of like protect him 
and I get like I always sort of had like a feeling about the singer dude I was always kind of worried that he was actually like betraying her and stuff I just sort of like got that vibe from him and I guess I was wrong because like that thus far did not happen and she kind of broke it off with him because she realized that um, he like she can't be with him and be sort of in this life and it's like too dangerous for him and she doesn't want anything to happen to him um, so I don't know if we'll see him again um, but uh, like I said he was a nice guy he was cute but no she belongs with James and that's it <laughs> no other no others need to apply um, Javier uh, is in love with uh, the crazy Boaz guys uh, was she his girlfriend I don't know if she was ever his girlfriend but I know that Boaz considered this girl like the love of her life Amelia um, and <clears throat> Javier is just sort of like making bad decision to bad decision to bad decision. Like he's killed people that he's not supposed to be killing. Uh, he's a little bit psychotic. Um, very much a change from my father Tomas, which is who Alfonso Herrera played before Queen of the South. Um, so very, very much different. Um, and it's just, but it's just been like you know great seeing him as like just seeing like his performance as this psychopath um, but thus far he's still loyal to Teresa um, we uh, I don't know if we, I hope we'll see him again but we lost King George because just because I think like almost dying and kind of like being held hostage twice <laughs> now he was held hostage in the first in the third season and uh, again this season uh, he was held hostage with a girl who was uh, Teresa's bartender of the club that she's trying to that she's opened in um, New Orleans uh, that kind of like w really like affected him and he kind of needed to take a step back so he's kind of left but um, I really hope that um, we see him again. I was just so happy that he didn't, he hasn't died, because I would have, I would have just been brokenhearted if we lost King George. But um, hopefully we'll see him again, because I love him, and I hope that like he starts like feeling better, because I miss his like happy-go-lucky, kind of borderline offensive manner. <laughs> um, and sadly. We did lose the bartender in a um, hit from one of Teresa's enemies. She died. And it's sad because King George wanted her to come with him, to leave with him, and to go and like for the two of them to be together. But she said no because Teresa promised that eventually she would help her get her own bar so she stayed to follow her dream and unfortunately lost her life so I'm very very sad about that and I'm very sad that she didn't go with King George and that they're not together um, yeah so that's sort of where we are right now and um, yeah so I have one more disc to go and I think I'm gonna finish watching that today so that um, I can go to the library tomorrow and return it because uh, it's good it's due soon um, so that's sort of the plan for the rest of the day is to watch Queen of the South do some editing do some reading and um, yeah record my little uh, vlog update for bees and yeah tomorrow the plan is probably to go to library and the post office as well yeah so I will talk to you guys later so just got back from my walk today where I went to the post office and the library and I went to the thrift store 
and I wanted to add a little uh, caveat to my earlier declaration that I was going to try and not buy any books until those piles there um, are like gone <laughs> until they're like that I that they're either like up there or like moved to my TBR there but until like those piles there are gone I want to add a caveat to that exempt from that little uh, resolution are uh, the Anne of Green Gables series because I want to continue with that series this year and um, any Kate Morton books that I find or any Karen White books that I find um, and maybe if I find books sort of like at the library in their little sale racks that are like one two dollars but if I do buy like if I do like falter and buy a book it can all I can only get one and also free libraries are ex exempt from this resolution see how I'm um, rationalizing breaking this resolution <laughs> but no like I'm gonna try I'm gonna try because I already broke it a little bit <laughs> first I ordered um, Anna Windy Poplars which is book four in the Anna Green Gables series uh, because I am almost finished I am almost finished Anne of the Island I have like just that little bit left to go and just oh my god I'm just loving it so so much um, Anne has met a boy named Royal Gardner and all I have to say about him is no just no I refuse I refuse to accept that Anne has, uh, that Anne likes this boy and uh, has accepted him as sort of her beau. Uh, no. I, I rebuke it in the name of the Lord. Um, <laughs> and uh, Gilbert is sort of seeing somebody named Christine. But um, yeah, Anne, Anne sort of has like some feelings about that, though she tries to deny that she has these feelings. And literally everyone around her, even freaking like Rachel Lind. Rachel Lind is like the captain of the Gilbert and Anne ship. She thinks that Anne is just being ridiculous and that uh, she belongs with Gilbert. And that's just that. And Rachel Lind will accept no substitute. Not no Roy Royal Gardner. No, 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 no. Uh, so I'm almost finished that so uh, I ordered Anne and Wendy Poplars and it said it's coming in like February so <laughs> we'll see but Amazon is always kind of like it, it usually ends up coming like sooner but it depends on like if the sale seller is like for, f directly like from Amazon or if it's like a seller sort of on Amazon and I think that's the case here but, um, yeah, and I'm sort of making myself that, like, if I order a book, I cannot order another book until that first book arrives. So going by that, I cannot order another book until February. I can do that. I can, I can do that. I, 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 <laughs> um, I finished... Alessandro's Prize, and I I think it's going to go on my keeper shelf, because it was just delightful. He was overbearing sort of at times, but nowhere near 
the regular Harlequin Presents alpha overbearing hero. Um, and mostly just when it came to Lily being in danger from that ass butt James. But Alessandro took care of James in that al typical Harlequin Presents alpha way. So James is no longer a problem. Uh, no, he did not kill him. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book, and I think it is going to go on my uh, keeper shelf. And so I'm going to be starting for, like, my take-to-work uh, book. I'm going to be starting Lorenzo Carcaterra's The Wolf, and it is a book set in the Mafia world, which is... Lorenzo Carcaterra sort of genre. Um, I love Lorenzo Carcaterra's books so much. Again, they are set sort of, in, he is sort of like a modern day Mario Puzo, in my opinion. Do not come for me. How dare you compare, you know, the classic Mario Puzo novels to like this contemporary, blah, 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 shut up. In my opinion, he is the modern day Mario Puzo. I love his books so much. I loved uh, Sleepers, which I had first seen as the movie, which is heartbreaking and just hella powerful. If you've not seen this movie, if you've not read the book, see the movie, watch the book. It's the, the movie stars um, Brad Pitt, Jason Patrick, Ron Eldard, and Billy Crudup, and the child counterparts of theirs theirs is the late Brad Renfo, Joe Perino, Jeffrey Wigder, Jonathan Tucker. Watch that movie. Trigger warnings for everything pretty much, <laughs> but watch that movie. And um, I have gangsters on my keeper shelf. I have sleepers on my keeper shelf. I have a safe place on my keeper shelf. I have the boys on my keeper shelf. I have Paradise City on the keeper on my keeper shelf. I think every Lorenzo Carcaterra book that I have read has ended up on my keeper shelf. And I don't doubt that this one will be um, also on it. Um, let me read you the back. My name is Vincent Morelli, though most people call me the wolf. You've never met me, and if you're lucky, you never will. I run the biggest criminal operation in the world. We're invisible, but we're everywhere. Wherever you go, whatever you do, we're gonna get through it together. Well, that's, no. <laughs> However you spend your money, a piece of it lands in our pockets. You would think that with that kind of power, I would be invincible. But because I let my guard down, my wife and daughters were murdered by terrorists. That was my mistake, but it was also theirs. I wasn't looking for a war, but they've left me with nothing but a desire for revenge. So a war is what they'll get. International organized crime against every known terrorist group. We won't get them all. But I will get vengeance, or I will die trying. They will know my name. They will feel my wrath. They will fear the wolf. I'm so excited to start this book. So that's what I'm going to be taking to work with me and reading during my breaks. Um, I finished Queen of the South Season 4 yesterday. Uh, returned it to the library today. And let me just say, the last bunch of episodes... Fantastic. I will, like, if you were to ask me, this was not my favorite season, but thankfully the last five or so episodes um, picked up a lot throughout, like, the whole season. Uh, really, like, sort of, if the whole season had been, like, these last five episodes or so, I would have loved it just as much, but it wasn't. Um, and I'm, again, we're, we'll be, we'll be discussing spoilers. So if you haven't seen it, um, when I, when I put this book down, then the spoilers are over. King George came back, which made me so, so happy. And, uh, he came back to help Teresa because they um 
that stupid damn piece of shit judge uh, murdered um, her, not her nephew. I keep, I keep saying her nephew. It's her godson, Tony. And I had a feeling that Tony was going to die because they were going to try to like get him out of, you know, their getting, get him out of the line of fire. And he wanted to be an artist and he was going to go to art school. And it was like all this like happy stuff was happening. And I had a feeling that Tony was going to die. Um, and he did because somebody put a bomb in Teresa's car, but, um, un, like Teresa sadly gave the car as a gift to Tony. So he got in the car and the car went kaboom. And so Tony died. And at first I was a little like, like, oh, really? We had like somebody you know kind of like a that's that had to happen like Tony that kid had to die but I will say if that kid had to die for the rest of the season to pick up rest in peace Tony <laughs> um because oh my god after like it was just amazing and like King George came back and I was so happy and Oh, I forgot to mention that the girl Amelia, who Javier and um, his cousin Boaz were both in love with, the girl Amelia was the sister in the Spanish telenovela that I had seen a while back called Amor, Amor Bravio. She was Camilla's sister in that telenovela. And she was in Queen of the South. That I thought that was so cool, because like when I first saw her, I was like, she looks really familiar and like just it just kept niggling me and niggling me and then like it just clicked in my head i'm like oh my god that's the sister that's camilla's sister so it was nice to see her but unfortunately she died because <laughs> the freaking judge uh murdered her too um and uh yeah then like king george came back which made me so so happy because i love that burly that burly bear man. I love him so much. Um, Pote and Kellyanne, those two have my heart. I love them so, so much. Um, and Teresa finally forgave Kellyanne. I guess she proved herself trustworthy again, which, uh, yeah, okay, sure, but you accepted Werrell with, like, no problem because, you know, like, he was the guy and he loved him and Speaking of guys that she loved, uh, the musician guy shows back up and was sort of like, you know, I, I understand now that you're not just a club owner. And he kind of like came back to sort of like get like an explanation of like why she uh, dumped him. And he, she came clean. She said, I run a drug cartel and you are in danger around me. Uh, now, please go away. <laughs> But, like, you know, she, you can tell that, like, she genuinely, like, loved him, and he went, he went. But guess who came back? The last scene of the season. I was hoping that this would happen. I was hoping that this would happen. Car pulls up. Somebody very, very wounded come, gets out of the car rushes towards um teresa falls in her arms and says they're coming for you and who is it my james my james is back i'm so happy i'm so happy i cannot wait until i can get the season five dvds because i need that season now now that my baby my giant peach is back <laughs> that's what king george calls him uh from like james and the giant peach get it mm -hmm. um yeah so 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 excited to watch season five so that's the end of that spoilers <laughs> those spoilery things um yeah, cannot wait to watch season five because it, season four 
was a bit of a slower season in my opinion but the last the last sort of half of it or the last like five episodes uh definitely like picked up and and just i oh god i cannot wait i cannot wait to see um the rest of the series i think season five is the last season so definitely looking forward to that um let me show you what i got from first let me show you what i got from the thrift store i went there because i was going to be all good and like not i know i was tempting myself by going in there but i thought okay i i want to get this thing which is a kettle i needed to get a kettle because i haven't had a kettle in like the longest time and that's just the bottom part i haven't had a kettle in like the longest time and i've just been like boiling my water in like pots and stuff and like just i miss having a kettle so hopefully mind you i got this from the thrift store hopefully it works but i'm you know it was eight bucks um and i allowed myself to <laughs> break my resolution but i'm gonna try and be good if i go to a thrift store or whatever i'm just going to allow myself to get one book and i got this book because it looks so pretty look at how beautiful that is and it the art of hearing heart Be beats by jan philip sendker or yan philip sendker um but oh my goodness it is just beautiful i could not and yeah they um the one of the libraries that i went to which was the one that i showed off the uh, three musketeers book that i got uh i knew that they had like a little sale rack thing but i didn't know if my other ones did so i went like to this library today um and I asked, you know, do you guys have like a sale rack of like books? And they do. Um, I just looked, I didn't buy anything yet from that one because I had a feeling that I was, cause I was going to go to the thrift store and, um, I knew that I wanted to get the kettle and I thought, okay, that's going to be, I'm, I'm going to, they have like a wider selection at the thrift store. So that, that's going to be where I'm going to get my one book, my one book. And, and I was good. I only got one book. Uh, let me show you what I got from the library. Borrowed from the library. First, we have Hellbender, which is a horror movie. Um, because I figure, I don't know, I'm in a horror movie kind of mood. I don't know why. Like, the past couple of weeks, I've been, like, in this horror movie kind of mood. Um, next, we have a Brazilian telenovela. Nada será... Como antes, which is um, nothing will be the same as before, or sort of like nothing will ever be the same, basically. And I got it because, like, I, you know, I like to watch my like Brazilian telenovelas, but especially because listed first, so I think he's like the main, the romantic interest or some or some such. And this was from 2016 to 2017. Uh, the first actor is Murilo Benicio, who is one of my favorite uh, Brazilian telenovela actors. I love him. Um, he was in a really famous one called Chocolate com Pimenta. How would chocolate with like spicy chocolate? Chocolate pepper? Chocolate with pepper? Uh, I remember watching it in Portugal, never got to finish it, want to finish it, but loving it, loving it when I was there in Portugal. Um, and yeah, and he was the main character in that. And that one was like set in like the 1920s or, or like the early 1900s. Um, this one doesn't have a, um, a um, synopsis. It doesn't have a blurb, so I don't know what it's about, but uh, 
I imagine it's crazy sauce. <laughs> and I got a documentary, Fem Feminism Inshallah, which is, I get, from what I learned from like Turkey, Turkish dramas and stuff, Inshallah is kind of like God willing or basically um, with God's help or if God allows kind of thing. Um, and it's a uh, history of Arab feminism. And I'm just very interested in like all sorts of forms of feminist sort of documentaries. And finally, Neruda, based on Pablo Neruda, the poet. And it is a movie with Gabriel Garcia, oh, where is he? G excuse me, Gael Garcia Bernal, who is a very famous, famous uh, Mexican actor. And he is playing Pablo Neruda uh, in a, it's sort of a sort of little, I don't think it's like a biopic, but it's more about his life, Pablo Neruda's life during like this specific time when he was going up against um, the, the Chilean president and he was causing all kinds of havoc and so they were uh, hunting him down and uh, I believe it's like that, it's specifically that part of like his life. So very, very interested in watching this. Um, yeah, so that's what I got from the library. Um, with a little detour to the uh, thrift store. Let me get, tomorrow I am planning to go to a free little library, weather permitting. Um, it was um, not, like it was cold, but not like unbearably so, or like particularly freezing or anything. Like if you had like your layers, you'd be fine. Um, so tomorrow, if it sort of stays like this, I'm going to go to a free little library and let me show you what I'm going to unhaul. Because if you don't know, free little libraries work in that you take a book, leave a book. So I'm going to drop off a couple of books and let me just, I, I meant to have them, but in preparation, we don't know her. Nico Nicola Kornick's The Scandals of the of an Innocent, which I just, I don't think Nicola Kornick's style just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. I've, I've tried her books like a few times now and it just, nope, just does not work for me. Um, I will be unhauling A Twist in Time by Susan Squires. Time travel, but it was like, didn't really grab me either. And it was just sort of like a little confusing. Yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was just a bit confusing and just not, did not grab me. And finally, Jeffrey Archer's As the Crow Flies. Um, I liked it. I didn't love it. And, um, it was, it was, it was okay. I just thought it just kind of dragged and there was this whole like revenge plot thing that I thought never really never really got resolved in my opinion and um yeah this one just did not work for me um i still love his uh, cain and abel um book better it's still my favorite okay so i'm gonna be unhauling this so those three books i will be unhauling to the free little library tomorrow hopefully we find something great um and uh yeah so that's the plan for tomorrow for the rest of the day today, I will be, you know, reading some more of Anne of the Island, which I have been loving. Um, I will be editing my um, book haul video for December, and I will be recording, I'm about to start filming my best books of 2022, best and worst, maybe. I, I only one really stands out as the worst and I have a separate review for it here on my channel so you likely know what book I'm talking about but um 
yeah, it'll likely be my best books of 2022, but maybe my best and worst. We'll see if I can, we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the rest of the plan for tonight, for the rest of the day. Um, I'm making uh, my lunch. I got some um, potatoes going because I'm going to have some mashed potatoes with uh, the rest of the pulled pork uh, from yesterday that I had with fries yesterday. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for the rest of the day and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. flesh is weak okay <laughs> so here's what happened I went to uh, go and um, to explore a new free little library today but the one I went to the one I first went to didn't exist anymore so I did the Googles I went on to the uh, inter-Google webs and uh, looked up another one and it was relatively close so I went to that one I did have to like go um, on the uh, subway and do like a few stops over to go to that one um, but uh, I went to that one and I got I left uh, the books there that I mentioned I was gonna unhaul and I did pick up, they did have like one book that seemed kind of interesting. So I picked, oh, but first, first I went to, I think I mentioned yesterday that um, I had looked at the, when I went to the library, I'd asked if they had a sale rack because the other library that I go to has a sale rack. And this one also did have a sale rack. So I didn't get anything yesterday, but I did go back there today and um, I didn't pick up anything else from the library. I just went straight for the sale rack. Um, and because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do the whole like one one book only if I go on a, if I happen to find a, um, a book sale or bookstore, something like that. I, and, I, and, I, and I was good in that sale rack. I only picked one book. I bought Alice Monroe's Runaway. And it's another collection of her short stories. Um, and I, I don't know, there's just something about like, sort of the sense, like, I haven't read Alice Monroe before, 
but I have kind of like given her like a little glance now and then, like a, a like open like uh, up and like look at a page or something, and it it seems like I I think I will like her short stories, even though like I'm not a short story person, but um yeah, there's something about like I want to I want to try her stuff, um, and I think that I will like her stuff, so got that, and it was for two bucks. So that was a good buy. Um, and then the so the first free little library didn't work out. It's not there anymore. So they should take that off the list. Um, and uh, so I went to another one. And I the selection wasn't that great, but I did get one book from it. It doesn't have a cover. But uh, it seems like it seems like a historical epic. It's very worn, like really, really worn. And it's called *The Exiles*. Oh, Volume One. Oh, okay. <sighs> From the who is this by? <laughs> I didn't even see the oh William Stewart Long, and um, it's it looks like a historical epic, um, set in Australia. And it's uh, the Exiles Volume One, and the series is called The Australians. So um, I, you know, how I enjoy my historical epic sagas. So I, I grabbed it. Now, on the way there, <laughs> I happened to find a bookstore, and the bookstore had. There was a like, big like posters and stuff on it saying like that stuff was like thirty percent off and like all that and they had books there for like one and two dollars. <laughs> but but I was still good. You could you could make the case that I technically bought three books today, but I'm gonna choose not to look at it that way. I'm gonna choose to look at it as I bought one book from the library, and I bought one book from this bookstore, even though I technically bought two. I say that I only bought one because my, like, like I mentioned yesterday, my Anne of Green Gables series is exempt from this rule. And I happened to find Anne's House of Dreams. Now. Sadly, they actually had Anne of Windy Poplars there, um, which I ended up ordering from Amazon the other day. So I'm w I'm still waiting for that one to come, and it was made me sad to realize that I could have gotten it today, but I didn't get it because I wasn't gonna get myself like two copies of the same. Book. I wasn't going to do that. I was going to be good. <laughs> so I still have to wait for Anne of Windy Poplars, which is likely not coming until February. Yeah. And then this one, I think, and she's wearing a wedding dress. Anne's House of Dreams. So I think this, there's another one before this. So I think this might be book five or book six in the because okay we have Anne of Windy yeah we have Anne of Windy Poplars and this one was when was this one published 1922 but This is Anna Winnie Pop. Winnie Pop was 1936. So I think. Let me do the Googles. I believe I'm pretty sure Anna Winnie Pop. Winnie Poplars is the next book, and not this one. Oh, okay, okay. I'm not bad. I'm not. I'm not bad. Because Anna Winnie Poplars is next. But, whoops, <laughs> Anne's House of Dreams is next after that. 
So once Anne of, Anne of Windy Poplars gets here, I won't have to wait to read the one after that. So I'm very, very happy, so happy that I will get in the frame, please. Thank you. Nope. <laughs> I will, I'm so happy that I will not have to wait to read this one, which comes next. Oh, so yeah, so I, I bought that one. And the cover is, I like the cover, but let me see what it's like without, oh, look at that gold. It's so pretty, but there's nothing else really on it. So I might keep this cover. I might not. I, I haven't decided yet. Uh, so yeah, I got this one. And again, this is exempt from my rule. So I did buy another book. So technically, I only bought one book from that library and one book from this bookstore. Because the, and it, it's uh, The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. And I, they had this bookstore was really like it was full of like books and stuff but it was mostly again like classic literature and like literary fiction and like that kind of stuff but there was something about this one i liked a lot more they had like a very very tiny tiny um uh romance section but um and i had to get the penguin classics uh edition of it because the Penguin Black Classics, I don't, that, that just screams classics to me. And I just, I really, really was like glad that I got, that I found like this edition. Um, yeah, if I could get like any classic literature in this, in this edition, I will. I will get it in this edition. Um, but yeah, I liked this one better this this bookstore better than the ABC books that I mentioned a while back that I was kind of disappointed that I used to get like they used to have like bins of like different kinds of books and now it's just like primarily literature and and classics and stuff I liked this one better and I don't know why I I couldn't tell you why I just did it was like full of like it was like full of books there and there was like children's books there and there was like yeah I, I I don't know I really liked it and I I like and also am worried about the fact that I know that it's like very close to me like I can like just like two subway stops over I can go there go to there and and it wasn't at and because it was 30% off so this one I got oh I told him I didn't want the receipt but I wish I had the receipt now to show you guys but this one was like seven dollars like 30% off and then this one was like 15 but like 30% off so I, hmm, hmm. <laughs> so, but you know, I, I, six days in and I've failed this resolution, <laughs> but like, no, I'm still going to try and like be good about it. And like, when I go to like a thing, just get one book, just one, um, so I'm almost so close to being finished. Um, Anne of the Island, I'm like that much in. I got rid of the dust jacket. I got rid of the book jacket because I like the inside, the, just this cover, like just the inside cover better. I like it better than the, the, the book jacket. That's why like I'm sort of, I'm looking at this one and I'm like, I like it 
and I wish that there was something like more on like the inside cover because I love that spine that spine is beautiful but like I I like the cover and I, but yeah um, so I'm almost finished that um, I've actually started my book of come here my book of uh, poetry the poetry of Pablo Neruda and I've decided that I'm going to read like a poem a day because I don't want to I don't want to sort of like get sort of like lose the the feeling of it kind of like I'm not sure if that makes sense I feel like if I read it like all in like one sort of time time frame that I won't really get a chance to like soak in sort of each one um, yeah so I, I've decided that I'm going to read like maybe like one a day I might change my mind about this if I want to like read more but um, so I just wanted to the first one is just like let me explain to you why I love this poet <sighs> the first poem woman I would have been your child to drink the milk of your breasts as from a well to see and feel you at my side and have you in your gold laughter and your crystal voice to feel you in my veins like God in the rivers and that's the line that I underlined and tabbed <laughs> and adore you in the sorrowful bones and dust and lint to watch you passing painlessly by to emerge in the stanza cleansed of all evil how I would love you woman how I would love you love you as no one ever did die and still love you more and still love you more and more <laughs> listen I love him so much I love him and yeah I, I want to be able to sort of like soak in each poem uh, that in in a way that I don't think I would be able to if I sort of sat down and like you know read the whole thing over a span of time like but like I would if I were reading a novel so that's the plan for that um, I returned it but yesterday I watched this documentary called just eat or just eat it something like that and it was about food waste and it was so good it was so so good and it fall it part of it also like followed this couple who for like six months um ate sort of only they they did not like go and like buy food they ate sort of what they had and they would go and would only like get like if they went to somebody's house then like that was okay if they were like you know given sort of um, if they went to somebody's house for dinner um, otherwise they only went they would go to like places where food was being like thrown away and they would only get food from like those places like um grocery stores and stuff like in the dumpster dumpsters that were they were like dumping out food uh like packaged food and like bread and stuff that were like perfectly fine but because of um the uh, because things weren't selling because people don't understand what best before dates actually mean um, that you can actually eat something that's past the best before date 
it doesn't mean that the item is going to go bad, especially if it's something like um, butter or like, you know, like just packaged sort of stuff. And the only, and somebody mentioned this in the documentary, uh, some scientist or something, that the only thing that you are, that they legally have to put best before dates on is infant formula. Legally. Any other thing, it's the grocery store um, themselves that are, or the, the sort of like the warehouse for the supplier for like the grocery store or whatever, um, are the ones who are like putting those like best before dates. Because of course they want you to keep buying, you know, they want the grocery store or whatever to keep buying from like the supplier or whatever. And yeah. Um, but they're, the grocery stores, they're like throwing away like waste food that is like misshapen or like maybe an apple isn't like bright red enough or like that kind of sh stuff is getting tossed from like the, in like the factories and, um, is like, just like not either being even packaged to send to the grocery stores or like the grocery stores themselves are like dumping them into like these dumpsters and su such. And there are, there are people out there who live off the food waste that these grocery stores are dumping in their dumpsters. I think they're called dumpster divers or something like that, uh, which I find fascinating. But, um, yeah, it was just, the, the documentary was like really, really good. Um, so today, oh, and I also, I, uh, recorded my best and worst books of 2022. I recorded that yesterday. Um, and today I am going to edit my weekly vlog from last week. Um, and I'm going to, because on my reaction channel, I'm having a lot of good luck with splitting up the episodes of whatever show or movie I am reacting to. I haven't tried it with a movie yet. I primarily have tried it with TV shows. I've tried it with Outlander and I've tried it with Lost, but not Lost, um, uh, Supernatural. So I've tried it with those two on my reaction channel. Um, that you'll see like the preview clips and stuff here on this regular channel and then you can follow the link to there um, where it, it, it doesn't quite have its own reaction it, its own URL yet but the subscriber numbers are going up so that makes me so happy um, and so I'm gonna try because uh, I'm gonna try and cut up the um, my reaction for uh, the cure the movie the cure because um, it's up there and but it's blocked for like a lot of countries um, like only like a handful of people I think can see it so I'm gonna try and see if maybe if I cut it up I'll have better luck copyright wise so that is what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the day it's gonna be editing my weekly vlog and um, sort of re-editing uh, the movie The Cure, with, um, which is the very sad story of um, a boy who has AIDS, and he and his uh, friend go on a little adventure to try to find the cure for the disease. And it's a heartbreaking, beautiful story, um, starring Bre the late Brad Renfro, Renfro excuse me, late Brad Renfro and Joseph Mazzello um, and Diana Scarwood Scarwood excuse me and um, Annabella Sciorra. Uh yeah so 
hopefully I can like chop that up and it'll work on my reaction channel. I really, really hope it will. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for the rest of the day. Oh, and I'm also going to be watching something a little lighthearted today. Um, I have the complete first season of All in the Family. I loved this show so very much and um yeah it's the first season and i am very much looking forward to it uh because yeah i it just i loved loved this show um so that's gonna be the plan uh some editing more on uh good women which uh is coming along um and i'm it's at about like 54,000 words and I usually try to at least reach 60 to make it like a good size sort of novel. Um, so I figure like once, like I should be able to really uh, release it this year. Um, I'm also working on the print version of The Choice, Blood Bells Book 4. Will's story because the ebook version is available now and thank you so much to everybody who has bought a copy. Uh, you can really help me out uh, by rating it, uh, reviewing it on either like Amazon or Goodreads or wherever. Um, that would be like really really great to get it out to sort of more people. But thank you so much to everybody who's bought a copy so far. I am working on the print version. I should have that done. I'm going to be working on that more today. We got like the cover and stuff um, uploaded and, and all that and like formatted and all that stuff. Um, I'm just doing the uh, the setup for it on, on Amazon um, and I should be finished that today. Then it's just sort of ordering the proof copy, getting that, making sure that everything's okay, approving that, and then it should go live. So this month it should be available the print paperback version of blood vows book four the choice should be available for those of you who would like to have your own paperback copy uh so that's sort of what we're up to for the rest of the day for lunch i'm going to be having some black scabbard fish and some lentils i am in the mood for just some lentils and fish. Um, my leg has sort of been bugging me pretty much this week, kind of like off and on with like varying degrees of intensity, which it has sort of been like a wet, kind of wet, drizzly week. So I'm, I guess I'm not surprised. I think this is just going to be a thing that happens now that it, it will hurt more when it rains. <laughs> Uh, yeah so that's gonna be a thing now um, so yeah gonna be working on editing good women editing my uh, weekly vlog chopping up the cure um, and watching all the family reading some more of Anne of the Island we're almost done I might finish that this today actually well, we just might um, yeah so that's gonna be the plan and back to work tomorrow so uh, I guess I will talk to you guys later bye